Dr. Roseanne here, and today we're talking about neurofeedback for ADHD. I'm an integrative and pediatric mental health expert who's on a mission to change the way we view and treat children's mental health. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get my videos every week. Let's dive in. One of the most common issues affecting children today is ADHD, and kids today struggle with focus for a lot of reasons. I thought this was a great topic to talk about how neurofeedback could be used with a kid with ADHD because neurofeedback is very commonly and effectively used with kids with ADHD to rectify, to reduce, to reverse their issues with focus and impulse control, you know, distractibility and helps to improve things like working memory and attention. Let's talk about an ADHD brain and why they struggle so much. Very classic case of ADHD when you do a QEG brain map or you're doing a brain check where you're measuring different brainwave frequencies, what you're looking for to determine if somebody has ADHD is somebody with ADHD is going to have way too many unfocused brainwaves and not enough focused brainwaves. Kind of common sense, right? Well, the cool part about QEG is you get to really actually see it. You get to say, that's ADHD. No, that's anxiety. No, that's a learning disability. For me, those are my three most common reasons that, you know, somebody fo has a focus problem. Depression, infectious disease, just chronic stress can really pull your focus, right? We talked about brain fog in my other YouTube videos because sometimes people get brain fog for medical reasons, and then all of a sudden people think they have ADHD and they didn't have a history of it. Kids with ADHD or adults, when we look back in their history, we have signs and symptoms, but it starts early. Doesn't mean that they're having the same difficulties they have at 17 or 24 or 57 that they did when they were four, but there are difficulties that it will appear. Their preschool teacher said, wow, Johnny can't sit still for two minutes or boy, he pushes all the other kids on the playground. Doesn't mean they've got ADHD, but when you look back and remember, we can only connect the dots looking backwards, right? For ADHD, clinically, you have to have an onset before age seven. So in a brain of somebody with ADHD, we have this very classic pattern of too many unfocused brain waves, right? And then not enough focused brain waves. And they're typically in the frontal region. And, you know, our frontal lobes, that's the job manager. They interact with every part of our brain. And so if they're not working right, it's like the brain's on a coffee break. Brain, you know, does a lot of things. But neurofeedback, when you are doing neurofeedback, it's improving the processing of the brain. I'm not going to make you smarter. We talked about in the last video of how neurofeedback works, but for somebody with ADHD, they're going to train their brain to push down on focused brain waves and increase those focused brain waves. And when that happens, right, we become more focused, more alert, more engaged. For a child, when they're more focused, alert, and engaged, they're able to take action differently. And that's why I often recommend when you're making the brain more alert, you pair it with new learning. And that's psychotherapy. And psychotherapy doesn't have to be talk therapy. It could be executive functioning training. It could be social skills. Or you could pair it with some academic training and do study skills training at a case right now where the mom said a huge difference in her ability to focus. She's able to get through work quicker. But what I'm seeing is that she completely doesn't have study skills. Makes sense to me. Study skills are learned over time. And if she's just been relying on her good intellect, which is what most kids with ADHD do, she didn't learn the skills to actually do the work. She was just regurgitating what she knew. And as you move through middle school and high school and college, you need independent study skills and they need to be directly taught if they've been unfocused. And that's a powerful way to harness the efficacy of neurofeedback and how it works so beautifully for kids with ADHD. So what's my Dr. Rowe know? It's thinking that ADD meds 
are more efficacious than neurofeedback. I'm here to tell you that it's not. Every day I see kids go on medication trial after medication trial, and it doesn't work. 97% of psychostimulants will come with an adverse side effect. And the top three are restricted eating, irritability, and personality changes. You really want to think twice, even just for those negative side effects, about what you're doing for your child. Because guess what? There are effective, safe, and natural alternatives to improve the health of the brain. And neurofeedback is an amazing one. And it has tens of thousands of research studies to support it. So what's my Dr. Rowe go? Exploring those natural options for improving your child's ADHD. We talked about neurofeedback, which I love and I often say should be available at the gas station. I just can't say how much it's improved my processing and my thinking and just helped me to think with such clarity and just to do things very quickly. It's been incredible. You know, I've been part of thousands of people's healing journey with neurofeedback. And a lot of them are kids with ADHD. So it's amazing when you get these super bright kids and you get their brain working and you get them to calm down how they start to change and most importantly, feel good about themselves. Because when you put a kid on a stimulant, you know, you're often agitating them, typically not going to feel great about themselves. And it comes with a whole host. So exploring natural options like neurofeedback, nutrient deficiencies, including essential fatty acids, looking at other things you can do to calm and regulate the nervous system is so important, not just for today, but for tomorrow. And natural treatments are as effective as our allopathic treatments. Neurofeedback is rated a level one intervention by the American Academy of Pediatrics. So consider neurofeedback as a healthy, safe, and natural alternative for your child's ADHD. So remember, if you or a child you care about is struggling, it's gonna be okay. I'm here to show you how to use natural and effective tools to help your child be alert, calm and just feel good about themselves. I want to hear how you are supporting your child with ADHD. So drop it in the comments below. Catch you on the next episode. And remember to subscribe to the Dr. Roseanne channel, where we talk about natural and effective ways to reduce and reverse mental health.